Kathy, take it away. So I want to thank you all for coming, and I want to thank uh, Representative Solomon and Committee of 70 and all the folks who were sponsors, the Northeast Times, um, and all my co-presenters co here. Am I in the right place? Um, so I've been asked to speak about um, voting systems updates. So, I'm, my, so again, my name is Kathy Bookfar, and I am the Senior Advisor to the Governor on Election Modernization which is a mouthful, but basically what it means is that I'm overseeing all the elections initiatives in Pennsylvania, which means that I get to work with the legislature, I get to work with lawyers, I get to work with organizations like Common Cause and Committee of 70 and Fair Districts PA, and though we haven't worked together before, I look forward to hearing more from you as well for open primaries. And we have a lot of, the governor, Governor Wolf, when he asked me to join you, his administration, the first question I asked was what were his priorities? And I have to say, he has, he's incredibly ambitious in wanting to achieve both the most secure and fair and accurate elections, but also elections that bring in the, the easiest access for voters. I don't know if you saw, but there was just a, a poll that came, uh, not a poll, there was some report that came out today, and I can't remember who, who did the report, but Pennsylvania came in 31st in the, in the country in terms of ease of access for voters. And that's not where we should be, right? So we're gonna hear about a lot of great ideas to change that. But so one of, one of Governor Wolf's top priorities this year and next year is replacing the voting systems in Pennsylvania. And who of you know that earlier this year the Department of State uh, directed that all counties across the state need to select new voting systems with voter verified paper trails by the end of 2019. Anyone? Okay, good, some people do. Okay, so so this, this is mostly to talk about how this is going, the progress, what the plan is, and then the, the kind of subject that's on more on folks' mind than almost anything else is how are we gonna pay for it, right? So, Okay, so why now? So Governor Wolf wanted to replace his machines with voter verified paper trails because as most of you probably have seen in the news, um, experts across the country, across the world, are recommending that we no longer have voters voting on systems that are in some cases are 10, 12, 15, 20 years old. We actually have one county in the state that the system's maybe 30 years old, believe it or not. So long before the first iPhone was created, long before most of you have computers, most of us you know, don't have 10, 20, 30 year old computers. So, um, so one of the issues is the age of the machines. Another issue is the, the not meeting current security standards. And then part of that is the lack of voter verified paper trails. So basically if you look at every expert across the country, across the world, whether it's computer science, national security, elections, pretty much anything that relates or touches on voting, um, they all agree that we need this voter verified paper trail. And it even goes all the way up to the top. So uh, United States Homeland Security Secretary Nielsen is calling on all state and local election officials to make certain, and this is a direct quote, that by tw the 2020 presidential election, every American votes on a verifiable and auditable ballot. So who else is suggesting? Well, who are all these experts? I, I couldn't possibly start to list them all, but I, I tried to at least give you a flavor. So you've got United States Senate, Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, United States House Committee on Intelligence, National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. And then across the spectrum, we've got Freedom Works, conservative organization, also Americans for Tax Reform, conservative organization. We have former Secretaries of Homeland Security, NSA, CIA, NATO Supreme Ally Commanders. And then you have great organizations like Common Cause and Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, Brennan Center, Verified Voting, on and on and on, Pennsylvania Voice, League of Women Voters. I don't know, 70 officially on the record? Yeah. All right, Committee of 70, excellent. I, I was looking at your website to see if I could pick out, I wanted to list you, but I wanted to ask you first. So good, all right, Committee of 70, give them a round of hand. Yeah. <laughs> And again, there are so many that I'm not listening here because it's really universal. Everybody agrees we need a voter verified vote paper trail. So what are other states doing? 
Um, and this was important to the governor to look into this before he decided what a time frame would be. Even though, the, you know, clearly the expert opinion was to have this done by 2020, he wanted to make sure that this could be done. And I want to tell you that, um, like Commissioner Dealey, my, actual, my first job in elections was actually as poll worker. So every decision that gets made, every analysis that's done in every issue, for me, goes back to the poll worker. Um, so we looked at what other states were doing, and in my first month on the job, I was calling around to you know, equivalent positions, secretaries of state, directors of elections in states across the country, because the good news about not being first is that we're not first, right? So there's a lot of other states to learn from. So most states, the huge majority, are already using paper-based systems. So that was one. And what we looked, so when we were looking at what other states were doing and what the plans were for the remainder, what we found out is that pretty much there were only five states left that use entirely direct recording electronic machines like the ones you use here in Philadelphia. And there are eight states left who use a mix of DREs and paper-based systems. And that's actually the case in Pennsylvania. And in the 67 counties, there are 17 that use paper-based systems. So, so we're down to 13, um, and most of them are planning to replace by 2020. So that was consistent with what we were talking about doing. As I said, the Department of State directed that counties must select new systems by December 31st, 2019, but they can implement them either in 2019 or no later than the primary of 2020. So, and just, you know, so you can see there, if Pennsylvania does not do this, if we do not replace the systems with voter verifiable paper trails, we will be one of only a handful of states that don't have an audible system, paper-based system, for the presidential election in 2020. And we will be the only swing state. Um, every other swing state has already made this transition or will be making this transition. So, the other question I get asked frequently is, well, is this timeline reasonable? Here we are, it's October 23rd, which I know because it's my birthday. And <laughs> um, so, so, we, so I ask questions of all these states. And for example, there have been, you know, sort of the downside of how states have sometimes made these transitions that sometimes machines need to be decertified and all of a sudden they can't be used. So you'll see uh, there's a bunch of those kinds of examples. In 2017 in Virginia, the state decertified machines in that some of the, so they did it twice actually. This only talks about once, but there was another time in 2015 and then in 2017, they decided two months before an election that counties could no longer use these particular machines. So in two months, in 2017, which is a gubernatorial year for them, they decertified the machines and those 22 jurisdictions managed to get new machines, figure out how to pay for it because the state didn't pay anything for that. Um, the vendors pr produced enough machines, they got it all done, 60 days, boom, they had an election, it was, it was fine. Same thing, Cuyahoga County, Ohio is one of the largest election jurisdictions in the country, 1.2 million voters, and they had to transition to paper-based paper -based systems from DRVs two months before an election. Again, no issues, transition to it. Is it ideal? Absolutely not. Can they do it? Yes, they did, over and over. Maryland did this transition in six months. So again, we gave, we announced this transition, this plan, in April of this year, which was two years before the primary of 2020. So we gave 18 months to two years, and as you can see, compared to what other states have done, this is a very feasible timeline. Okay, so, so I also have been traveling the roads of Pennsylvania. Um, so part of my job is getting to work with the county boards of election in all 67 counties. So we've been traveling around because we wanted to make sure that the counties who run the elections in Pennsylvania have the support that they need. And Philadelphia was one of my first visits, and Commissioner Dooley and Commissioner Elstrom, uh, we met, talked through this, and I've been doing the same thing all across the state. So this is just a few pieces of information. Um, the, and again, we're going to be getting to the funding, and that's going to be the question that your breakout group is really going to be talking about. But the main issue for most counties is how we're going to pay for this. 
So, um, so what we did was, I don't know how many of you heard that the federal government uh, gave a small appropriate, well, it's a lot of money, 380 million across the country, the federal government gave to the states to use for election security, voting systems upgrades, or similar related uh, projects. Um, so that happened in the spring, which was perfect timing. So really right at the same time that we started this, this plan, we, had, we knew that Pennsylvania was getting $14.15 million from the federal government. So it's actually a little less than 14 million and there's a 5% state match, but it gets us to 14.15. So we knew we wanted to get as much money in the hands of the counties as possible. So we immediately designated that money for the voting system. So we're giving 100% of that money to the counties and it's divided proportionally based on registered voters. So the commissioners in each county, they report to the Department of State how many registered voters they have based on the last deadline before the election. And we took that number and divided it accordingly. So, so that happened earlier this year. And then basically we've been starting the process of trying to figure out the state portion of the funding. So we've been, in addition to traveling around the state and meeting with county commissioners, we've also been meeting with legislators. So uh, thank you in advance for your support, Representative Sullivan. Um, you know, this is, the Department of State looks at this. Our preference is that this should be a cost share. The counties and Philadelphia included should not be bearing the brunt of this cost. However, there's going to have to be a cost share for each portion. And so your, your goal in the breakout session is to talk about how it should be divided, who should be paying for it. So I'm gonna, I, I suspect that my time is probably getting there, so I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here. I will say that we have our, we have our very first county, Susquehanna County in Northeastern Pennsylvania, is the first, in the, the first county in the state to lead us forward, so they actually already got their new systems and they're implementing them this year. Uh, most counties are planning to implement them next year. So most counties are either doing, I think a handful are gonna be doing them for the primary of next year. The majority are aiming to implement them for the general of next year. Um, and, okay, so biggest concern by counties is funding. So the 14.15 million is not nearly enough. The Department of State um, and many others have done estimates of what we think if the entire Commonwealth were to pay for these machines outright, which is not the only option, but if we were, that it could be anywhere from 100 to 150 million, give or take a couple million. Um, so estimate, you know, 125 million, we'll just kind of split, split it down the middle. So Department of State, as I said, thinks it should be a cost share. Um, question is, how much, by whom? So what are the considerations? So in the Commonwealth, that generally elections are paid for locally. So the counties counties handle the, the majority of the costs of the elections. On the other hand, um, you know, again, this is throwing this out to you, right? You, you, the, the general, the citizens should decide. Um, state and federal governments are pushing this change, right? So you've got that. Um, also, in back in 2002, four, uh, when HAVA was first enacted, three, there you go, um, the, the huge majority of the cost of the new equipment, new equipment was paid for by the federal government. So we have that as what happened last time. Um, and the federal government is also considering adding new requirements to the counties and states. So, for example, they want us to, to implement <coughs> audits that are more significant than what we do now. Does that impact your thought about who should cover the cost? And then there's the lawsuit factor. So there are a whole bunch of federal lawsuits that are being rolled out right now that are saying, if we don't implement these new machines with paper trails, that we may be violating federal constitutional rights. And there's also a state law that if we don't do this, um, there are gonna be citizens who are going to petition the department to re-examine all the old voting systems. So how do those potential lawsuits impact who you think should pay for it. Um, look. So those are those are all the issues and you know look forward to hearing what you guys have to say and thank you very much for, for being here and caring about the issues.